we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the first tappet and the first tappet is just gonna go right into it. It will slide in. You're gonna wanna work from center out and get them all torqued we're down. We're gonna put our variable valve timing solenoids back into the circuits. So I got my little grease bottle here. And the bolt screw goes there, which meets up with this hole down here. We have the oil here, intake and exhaust. And what we're gonna do to these girls, we're gonna take our exhaust bolt side and it takes a 1316 socket. And excuse my VBT, it's, it's, she's pretty happy right now with all the lubrication in the world. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lubricate the, the surrounding part here where she slides into. I'm gonna take the exhaust side, slide her in, give her a good spin a -roo. Then we're gonna take the bolt that's provided. Always change these out if you can, or else your motor will go bye-bye and you would cry cry. Okay, I have mine in hand tight. We're gonna do the same exact thing to the intake side. The other variable valve timing solenoid I'm just gonna lubricate the inside of it real quick. I'm gonna wet her, her stick. Lubricate it up. And take the intake side, slide her in, make sure that she spins. All right guys, so as you guys can see, we finally got the timing chain on to the motor now. Everything is inset, we have everything making sure we double checked every single bolt and every single nut on this motor. Now the most important thing is, is the timing chain. What you're gonna do after you go ahead and just screw these in finger tight for now because we're gonna tighten those down here in just a jiffy. Don't worry, one bolt will stick out longer than the other one will. It, it's normal. When you're putting your chain on, you wanna start from the VVT solenoids first. You wanna make sure you pull the phaser back so you can get the timing chain on there. Then as you're getting it to the bottom sprocket, what you wanna do is put it on the sprocket, bring it back up, put the guide back in, and then go ahead and put your grenade in place. Because why? Because fire in the hole! We are on the intake side and what we're gonna be tightening down is the phaser. The bolt is 30 pounds of actual feet. You're gonna tighten this one too. And you need to have somebody hold the intake cam so that way it doesn't turn when you're torquing down the bolt. Let's set this first. And it's a two stage, it's 30 pounds and then a 60 degree. Let me get my ratchet on there, ready? Yep. There, yep. You repeat that same process on the exhaust side. Now what we are about to do is we gotta get the water pump bolts all torqued down to spec. And the spec of these girls are eight foot pounds. I'm gonna torque this one, and I'm gonna torque that one, and then I'll torque that. Double check the torque always, just to make sure that they didn't move when you were torquing the other side down. And then the next part that we have to do is we gotta take the pin that holds the timing out. But if you still have your bolt still into the crank, you're gonna wanna go ahead and pull that bolt out of the crank. That way you can get that side bolt out. We can get the air compressor put back on and then we're gonna start working our way towards the cover. All right, now we got the, the screw that you took out to time it. You're gonna go ahead and take out the timing bolt that was in there that came with that kit that we're gonna be linking down in the description down below of every single video, so make sure you go ahead and check it out. But other than that, this part right here goes in that hole where the tool was. If you're not putting in any other hole, you're gonna have some problems. Bolt her back in, don't cross thread it, take your time. If it doesn't go in, just unscrew it again and re-screw it back in. I'm just gonna torque that down with by hand. Perfect. Just enough to where vibrations won't 
take it out. That's all you, you definitely don't want that because then your oil will spurl out of that thing and you will run out of oil quick. It might not seem like a big passageway, but trust me, oil is very thin. Now we got the AC bracket. You want to stick your compressor bolts if it wants to work with you anyways. There we go. Just too low. Then we're going to go ahead and put this one in. Because I already put $2,800 into this build. So if you're wondering how much it costs to get a brand new cylinder head, cams, solenoids, bolts, timing chain, gaskets, again, yeah, it's, it's roughly about $2,800 or $2, for a four-cylinder. Now, if you're working on a V8, I feel even worse for you because V8s do take a lot more money out of your pocket than, than, uh, than you know, your four bangers. All right, guys, so the next step is we're putting the bolts back into the AC compressor. So the main thing that you need to make sure of is I told you in one clip to make sure that you remember what bolt goes where and if you've forgotten or you just don't want to look back in all the footage it's fine i'll tell you in this video they're going to be the studs are going to be one on top and one on the bottom and the one without the stud is going to be in the rear you're going to want to torque those puppies down to eight pounds eight pounds ladies and gentlemen make sure that you uh torque those girls down they don't want to have your ac compressor coming off today's task is trying to get the fuel pump bracket, the high pressure fuel pump, and also the vacuum pump back onto the rear section here. You also have the fuel hose that you need to put back on too, which leads to your high pressure fuel pump, and then one goes to your injectors. So make sure that you don't mess this hose up. That's pretty important. And then we have these for the bracket, and they gotta get the high pressure fuel pump on there. The only seal that I didn't replace and I can't find anywhere is this seal here. We gotta make sure we torque that down to spec and then we gotta do the vacuum. We're putting the high pressure fill pump back on and as you can tell how the bracket sits and as well as the little insulator goes on right there. We put the pipe on, pipe leads there the other half goes here, so the one with the sticker on, and if yours still has it, goes that way to the fuel pump, the high pressure fuel pump. And now I got the bolts in my hand, and we're gonna start torquing high pressure fuel pump down. But other than that, we're gonna go ahead and put this down. Sorry, we're not really filming uh, us doing it right now. I'm trying to fill you in as much as I can on how to put it back together so you don't have to worry about looking for it and all the torque specs will be there. We'll even give you a better glance at this pipe here if you can try to see if you can see how that pipe looks. One goes to the stud, and the other one goes down here on the back side of the coolant tube. High pressure fuel pump is on finally, ladies and gentlemen. I got all the bolts torqued down. It's really hard to get them in and get a torque wrench in there, so I just did them pretty much by, pretty much hand tight. I did that one and the rear one, and I also got the whole fuel rail that goes to your fuel rail. So I guess you can call that a fuel hose down over here already. So barely sticking up, you can barely see it in the dark right there. Let me see if I can give you guys some light. Okay, there it is right there. That's the hose. Now what we're gonna be working on now is getting the vacuum pump in. And that is the vacuum pump. I gotta replace the seal on it real quick. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start bolting that in. After the fill rail, then I'm gonna start prepping and cleaning the cover so I can get the cover on. Then we're gonna start getting the harmonic balancer on, the sensor on, and that stuff is crucial. So I'm definitely gonna be filming that for you guys so you guys understand how that will go, ordinary for it to be timed. We are moving towards the vacuum pump. Always know where your check valve goes. It goes in your brake booster. It goes there, and this one plugs into one of those white ones that are down here somewhere. We'll show you that later. This is the most important part right here. This is keyweighed to the key that gets screwed back into the cam after you take it back out. You gotta, you gotta take that one, put it back in if you haven't done it already. It's 
never too late. I've done it with this bridge on there, should have no problem. We're gonna go ahead and set this in there now and pretty much screw her down. I would highly recommend replacing the gasket. Don't use the same gasket for the vacuum pump. I used it for the fuel pump because we can't find one, which I'm hoping and praying that it's gonna be fine. Every little single gasket lately has been on this motor, it's been changed. Now what we have sitting here is the fuel rail and the fuel injectors. I would definitely recommend replacing them if you haven't done so already. For me, I've already replaced them once. So I'm going to just roll with it. Plus only one fell out, so I know that my seals are still good. These typically are one use only. Just make sure that you don't see any leaks coming out of these. So when you start turning on the engine and you start building that fuel pressure, go outside and make sure that none of your fuel injectors are leaking. So it's kind of crucial and important to make sure that that does not happen that happens you're gonna run into some problems so you have to take this completely apart again you have to take your intake runners off again it's just a waste of time don't do it don't waste your time don't be like me just make sure that all your new seals are pushed into your fill injectors and your fill injector is sitting into the holes the way it's supposed to be and as well you always want to make sure that all your bolts are torqued down to spec because like i said this is a high pressure fuel rail and you don't want this to pop off pop loose or whatever the case may be and if you want to have the time to go ahead and replace this sensor you can go ahead and replace it if you want if it's having problems the high pressure one you definitely want to replace because of the fact that that one is the cause to eco boom replace it don't be dumb be smarter than the tool just make sure you guys put this clamp on before you put your fuel injectors in or else you won't be able to get to it it's so easy definitely not Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and slide our fuel injectors in, nice and calm and steady. Go ahead and whack them down. And these are torqued to 89 inches, wait five seconds, and then torque them down to 124 inches. And if you guys don't have an, an inch torque, We'll put the conversion on the bottom in feet pounds. Now I'm just trying to lock the rear into the fuel rail. So we don't forget that because that's crucial. That's where the fuel will start pouring out of. And then we're going to torque that down. It doesn't need to be torqued down too tight. It just needs to be torqued down tight enough to where fuel will be pouring out of it because it is high pressured. And then you're going to take your bolts Take the other one. What we have gotten done today is the AC compressor is now bolted back in again. And always remember there's a stud there and there's a stud on the bottom. And then your wiring harness down here has a stud input there what you want to do with them is you just want to turn them around slide them in the same thing to the bottom one and there you go your ac compressor is put back in then we did the high pressure fuel pump which that's all set and ready to go then we did the vacuum pump that little black gear that you have to put back into the cam again make sure you torque that back down again doesn't really have to be torqued to just turned and then there's a gear inside of your vacuum pump that needs to meet up with that so we'll go into that slot and slide right into it and you're going to go ahead and torque her down then we put the old fill rail back in went ahead and torqued all those bolts down to spec what they're supposed to be last but not least we put the timing cover back on which I did replace the seal in the front of the timing cover and then we put all the goo and gump that's supposed to go to the timing cover and that will dry by most likely tomorrow I put a really good thick bead down so hopefully she doesn't leak my brother cleaned and pretty much repolished the whole entire cover so I will know if there's any leakage going on. And I cleaned all the way around it to make sure that there's no leakage going on back there. 